All right, last one. Geometry circles, angle measures, and segment lengths. This is going to be it, our last new section for the year. Um, we've already learned about all of these different lines. We've learned uh, first and foremost about the diameter. The diameter goes um, from one side to the other through the center point. It's a special kind of chord. A chord is a line that goes from one side through the other of a circle, but it doesn't necessarily go through the diameter. A radius is half the diameter. It goes from the center point to the side. Then we've talked about tangent lines. They are outside a circle and intersected in one point called the tangent point. So we are going to focus our lesson tonight on this line. This one's called the secant. The secant intersects a line um, in two points. It keeps going. That's the thing about a secant. It can be a ray. It can be a segment. But you see how a chord stops? A secant keeps on going. So it's kind of a combo between a chord and a tangent, but it, it intersects it in more than one point like a chord does. So our objective is to find the measures of angles formed by chords, secants, and tangents. So we're going to talk about these three special kinds of lines, the secant, the tangent, and the chords. And as you know, a diameter is a special chord that goes through the center. So we're going to find the lengths of segments associated with circles. It's essential that you understand that angles formed by intersecting lines have a special relationship to the related arcs formed when the lines intersect a circle. So, take a look at this. It's kind of crazy looking. These are the rules that you are going to learn. They're going to make a little bit more sense in a few minutes after we do some problems. I know they look a little scary right now, all those letters and crazy stuff, but there's... Um, Three essential rules that we are going to learn. So a secant is a line that intersects a circle at two points. So again, it's like a chord. And um, secants, yeah, that we're going to have some special rules that have to do with them and the angles that they make. So theorem 1213, the measure of an angle formed by two lines that intersect inside a circle is half the sum of the measures of the intercepted arc. So you add them together and divide by 2. So we're looking here at angle 1. Angle 1, we would find it by adding this arc x and this arc y together and dividing by 2. And then obviously, well maybe not obvious, but should be, that this is a vertical angle, so that can be found the exact same way, actually. And then they form a straight line. This would be a linear pair here. This would be a linear pair here, or you could look at it the other way. So um, you can find that ankle if you have two intersecting arcs. Theorem 1214. So, oh, let me go back for a minute. 1213. You'll notice that this angle is located inside the circle. So... If it's inside, you add together the intersecting arcs and divide by 2, if it's inside. However, if it's outside, the measure of the angle formed by two lines that intersect outside the circle is half of the difference. Inside, it's half of the sum. Outside, it's half of the difference of the two arcs. So again, we're looking at the two arcs that it intercepts. You would subtract the bigger minus the smaller one and cut it in half. Bigger minus the smaller one, cut it in half. Bigger minus the smaller one, cut it in half. Outside, difference, inside, sum. The lines from a point outside the circle through the circle are called secants. A secant is a line that intersects a circle at two points. So a chord is a part of a secant. Line AB is a secant, ray AB is a secant, and segment AB is a secant segment. A chord is a part of a secant. Finding angle measure. What is the value of each variable? So these are secant segments. They go from each side here. The rule, remember, 1213. This angle, angle X, is equal to its inside. Inside is sum. This angle, uh, angle X, we'll call it, is equal to one half inside 
sum of 46 plus 90. to the arcs that it intersects. That's the rule. If it's inside, you add them together and divide by 2. So angle x in this case, or x degrees or whatever we want to call it here, is equal to 1 half of 46 plus 90 is 136 divided by 2 is 68 degrees. Inside sum. This angle is on the outside. So in order to find it, we would find the difference between the two intercepted arcs. Well, the thing is, is we're not looking for the angle, we're looking for the arc. So when it's outside, it is the difference of half of the intercepted arc. So 20 is one half of the bigger arc, 95, minus the smaller arc. This is z. So you want to solve for the variable z. First thing that you should do is get rid of this one half. You get rid of this one half by multiplying by the reciprocal. So 40 is equal to 95 minus z. Now I want to isolate the variable. So I'm going to subtract 95 from both sides. 40 minus 95, or 95 minus 40, is going to give me negative 55 equals negative z, and that's a negative 1z. You would divide. So z in this case is 55 degrees. 95 minus 55 is 40, and when you cut it in half, you get 20. So that's we can manipulate this formula to find the value of a variable. You try these three. Try them. Pause this video, and I'm going to do the work while you do the work, and then play the video again and check your work. Don't just copy what I write down. You want to see if you can do it. These rules are easy when they're separate, but together there's a lot. Remember, outside difference, inside sum. So for A and B, we're talking about angles on the outside. You would use the difference. And for C, you would use the sum. So try these out. See if you can get it. Check your work on mine in a minute. All right, so this outside angle, 70, is equal to one half of the difference of the bigger arc minus the smaller arc. So 70 is equal to one half of W minus 110. So first thing I want to do is get rid of that one half. So 70 times 2 is 140 is equal to W minus 110. Then I want to use inverse operations. I want to add 110. So 140 plus 110 is 250 equals W. If you got that, great. If not, look back at your work and see how you set up your equation differently. For B, this outside angle y is equal to one half of the bigger arc minus the smaller arc, 110 minus 30. So y is equal to one half of 110 minus 30 is, so y is equal to 40. And then this last one, inside Inside is sum. That's what you need to remember here. Outside difference, inside sum. So, this inside angle, the one that's 35, is equal to one half of the sum of the arcs that it intercepts, x plus 30, x plus 30. I want to get rid of that one half, so I have to multiply by two on the other side. Two thirty-five is seventy is equal to x plus thirty. When I subtract thirty, I am going to get that forty is equal to x. So x is forty. When you add forty and thirty, you get seventy. When you cut it in half, boom, boom, thirty-five. If you have any questions on this, make sure you write this down right now. Tomorrow in class, you should ask. Okay, here's a couple more rules. Are you ready? For a given point and circle, the product of the lengths of the two segments, remember, product means to multiply. The product of the length of the two segments from the point 
to the circle is constant along any line through the point and a circle. So, number one here. This half A times this half B is equal to this half C times this half D. And they're not necessarily halves. So each side of the segment, when you multiply them, are going to equal the other when you multiply it. Rule two. This one's a good one. Rule two. When you add this piece to this piece, so the length of the whole segment times just the piece on the outside is equal to the length of the whole segment times just the piece on the outside. If we didn't have enough rules, here's one more. This one, the whole segment times the piece on the outside is equal to, and this only applies when there's just a piece on the outside on the other one, this squared. Let's use these rules. So, finding segment lengths. You have to determine which rule you're going to use. If you look back, rule number one is when the segments were on the inside, nothing hanging out. Rule number two, they both went in and had pieces hanging out. Rule number three, this one just has a piece on the outside, nothing on the inside. Only one of them goes in. So rule one, both completely in. Rule two, both in and out. Rule three, only one in and out. So example A, we're going to use rule number two because both of these have some in and some out. So the sum of these, 6 plus 8 times just the piece on the outside, 6, is equal to the sum of these, 7 plus y, times just the piece on the outside, 7. And then you just simplify and solve the equations. You just have to remember the rules on how to set these up. That's the hard part on these. So... When you simplify 8 plus 6 times 6, I'm going to get 84 is equal to, you have to distribute, 7 times 7 is 49, 7 times y is 7y. Now you want to subtract 49, so you're going to get 35 is equal to 7y, and now you want to divide, so y is equal to 5. So y is equal to 5 here. It's about how you set it up. You have to know the rule. You have to know the rules to these. For b, it's got just a piece on the outside and then a hole and a piece on the outside. So this is the one where you square it. This is rule number 3. So, 16 plus 8 that's the whole segment, times just the piece on the outside, is equal to this one times itself, z squared. So 16 plus 8 times 8 is 192 is equal to z squared, because it's this one times itself. So what's the opposite of squared? square root. So the square root of 192 is about 13.9. So z is approximately 13.9. We'll, we'll round them to the nearest tenth. We'll do a decimal val value. We won't simplify radicals in radical form, okay? So the square root, that's how we did this one. We undid squared by doing square root. So square root of 192, we got 13.9. Again, you just have to remember the rules. This one was rule 2. This one was rule 3. So look back up at your rules. What is the value of the variable to the nearest tenth? See if you can get these two. Pause the video, and when you're ready, turn it back on. Check your work. If you just copy my work, you're not going to know whether or not you know how to do it. Okay, you ready? Let's check your work. So, 
the whole thing times the piece outside. So 20 plus 14 times 14 is equal to the whole thing, which is 16 plus x, times the piece outside, 16. So we're going to do 34 times 14. So 476 is 34 times 14 is equal to 16 times 16 is 256. 16, so I'm distributing 16 times 16 is 256. 16 times x is 16x. Oh, let me get rid of that. Use the same pen. So 16x. Now I want to say... 476 minus 256, so I'm going to get 220 is equal to 16x. And now we want to divide by 16, and we are going to get that x is it's exactly 13.75. So if we were going to round that to the nearest tenth, because this is a 5, x would be approximately 13.8. That's our answer, 13.8. Did you get that? If you didn't get that, check your work. This is how you should set up your equation. The whole thing times the outside piece, the whole thing times the outside piece. Okay, that was rule number two again, example A. Example B is rule number one. Rule number one is each part of the segment times, so this is 6.5 times m is equal to 3 times 7. This is the easiest rule to remember. So it's 6.5m is equal to 3 times 7 is going to give you 21. And then you want to divide by 6.5. So you're going to get m is 3.23076692. So you want to round to the nearest tenth. So m is approximately 3.2 is our solution. Again, check your work. Make sure you got these. Make sure you got them. This is our last section. This is our last section of notes all together. We're going to review circles. We're going to have a test on circles. And then we're going to start reviewing for the final exam. So um, make sure that tomorrow, if you have any questions, you ask.